Hey guys, what's up? Jamie Atkinson here. Congratulations, you're booked in for a call with the team. And I wanted to say welcome. Thanks for giving us a little bit of your time. And in this video, I want to give you one, a little bit of an idea about next steps and what's going to happen. So please make sure you watch the entire video because I'm also going to go in and tell you a little bit behind the scenes of how this process works so that when you're coming into the call with the team that you understand about who we are, what we do, and how we can actually help you to grow and scale inside of your business. And I want to just take you completely behind the scenes. Now, a couple of uh, housekeeping points when you're showing up to the call, a couple of things that we always encourage you to do. One, make sure that if you have a business partner or just a life partner that you need to make the decision with, that you bring them onto the call. And when you show up to the call, make sure that you come and show up on time. You know, we want to make sure that you're there to get the most out of it. A lot of people take notes, so maybe come with a pen and paper at hand is we're going to take a look inside of your business and really help you figure out what's holding you back from scaling and try and help give you a game plan there and then on a call on what you need to do to be able to scale to the next level. And what we're really trying to figure out is, can we help you to grow and scale your business faster and cheaper than if you were to do it by yourself? And that's kind of the entire goal of inside of this process. Now, what I want to do is actually just take you behind the scenes and help you understand a little bit about what we do. And I wanted to talk to you about how we're booking 20 to 30 sales calls week in, week out, and helping founders to scale using a podcast sales team. And something that's really important to understand, guys, is that I am not personally involved inside of this projects anymore. I do not do podcast interviews. I don't do podcast solo content. I don't do emails. Um, I actually only spend around about six to 10 hours a week inside of my business running it. And the rest of the time I spend on developing the product. And this is what we want to get a lot of our founders and helping them to accomplish for themselves. Now, who am I and what am I here to talk about? Well, my name is Jamie Atkinson. I'm the founder of podcastclosing.com. I'm actually the co-owner of the Nita Guest Group alongside Angel. We recently went into business together. Uh, I'm super excited because one of the big things that she told me is that there are a lot of people who have podcasts, who have businesses, who really aren't utilizing that podcast to help them to grow and scale. And what we're known for is actually helping six and seven figure founders and CEOs who have existing podcasts to double their sales and scale their business by building a podcast sales team. And this process doesn't require you to run ads. It doesn't require you to post on social media, and it really doesn't require require you to ever DM a prospect. If you personally look at my Instagram, my Facebook, or any of our business pages, we don't run any ads, we don't do any posts on social media, and we don't do any outbound DMs or, you know, appointment setting. And yet we have a thriving business that is booking 20 to 30 sales calls a week. And we've been able to scale our business to a really, really successful level. And we're continuing to grow and scale and building this into an eight figure enterprise over the next couple of years. Now, your number one question, as you're probably listening to this video is, well, what's a podcast sales team? And how does it actually help me to scale inside of my business? And so the first thing I want to recognize here is that um, Alex Sharfen, who's one of my mentors, he actually created something called the Billionaire Code, where he categorized all of the different businesses. And one of the categories of businesses was businesses doing a hundred to three hundred thousand dollars a year. And the second category was businesses doing three hundred to a million a year. And people that are doing that a hundred to three hundred K a year, ten to thirty thousand dollars a month, the number one challenge that they need to solve inside of their business is automatic lead generation and focusing on -on one-on-one sales. So how are you automatically having lead generation coming into your business and doing more one-on-one sales as the founder? That's what you need to be focusing on at that level. And then once you get past the $30,000 a month mark, what you then start to focus on instead is, well, how do I now completely automate marketing And how do I generate and create leverage sales, which is sales calls that you do not need to do as the business owner? And like I said today, I'm really lucky that we have this completely down for us. We have an automated marketing system and leverage sales. So the core problems that most of you, if you're a six or a seven figure business owner, or maybe you are, you know, coming into the six figure level, the core problem that you probably have right now is booking sales calls with the right market. We're talking about rich market customers who are willing and able to invest in themselves that are actually looking for your solution. And the second problem that most of you have is an automatic sales system that doesn't rely on you. 
A lot of you guys have sales systems, but if you decide to go on vacation for a week, that sales system completely falls apart. So we need to be able to make it completely automated. Now, we're very lucky to have figured this out inside of our own business. I've done so many of these different solutions myself. A couple of years ago, we stumbled across something that we call podcast closing. And I want to tell you a little bit about how podcast closing works. But first of all, you're a podcaster, so you probably know this, but most people, when they do a podcast, they have, if they have a regular show, they're usually going out, they're doing podcast interviews, they're doing solo content. A lot of people, they do that for, you know, over a year. Some people don't do it that long, but for the people who stick it out for a year, there are some really serious benefits to podcasting. When you've been podcasting for a long time, you get increased credibility. You have more connections. You actually learn how to speak and, and purvey your marketing message in a much simpler way. And ultimately, what tends to happen is that your business will typically grow just by going and getting on and doing podcast interviews because you're more focused, you're building connections, you're focused on growing the business. So the problem that most people have is 99% of people who are podcasting, they have no ROI because they have no audience. So a lot of people that go out there, unless you already have an existing audience, unless you're an influencer, or unless you already have a lead generation system inside of your business... The truth is, if you are doing a podcast, you probably are not going to grow your audience. And so most people we see who have a podcast for a significant amount of time, they are not making any significant money from the show. We have clients who have millions of downloads. I have a client and a friend who has 4 million downloads, another one with a million, another one with one and a half million. Even these shows with significant audiences, they still aren't monetizing it. So one of the things that we really focused on when creating this business is that we assume that you have no audience and we help you make money anyway. And we assume that you never will have an audience. And so just to help you guys understand how I came across podcast closing, um, about four or five years ago, I was uh, actually having a really hard time as a business owner. And at the time, I was trying to generate and create cold call teams. I have a lot of experience in sales teams. That's kind of what I used to do in the corporate world. And so I was building these cold call teams who were phoning up dental offices and booking calls to try and see if we could help them to grow their business. And I had a team of five different guys who were going out and doing cold calls all day, every single day. And we were booking sales calls. And one of the things that always happened is when I got onto those sales calls with these dentists, I just had a really hard time getting them to trust me. Like I'm a fairly good salesperson. I would say pretty good. But the challenge that I had with this was that no matter how many of these calls I got on, these dentists, they just didn't trust me. And so I was doing that on one side. And on the other side, I had just started my very first podcast. And I was doing podcast interviews with all of these business owners. And there was these amazing connections and this level of trust and, and this bond that we had from doing these interviews together. And then one day I was doing this interview with this guy. And at the end of the interview, he was like, Jamie, I, I want you to come and help me do marketing inside of my business can I hire you? And he ended up wiring me $2,000 at the end of the interview. And I remember thinking like, oh my God, like what just happened? That was so strange. Like on one hand, I'm doing all of these cold calls and not having any luck. And on the other hand, this guy just wired me $2,000. So I said, what if I could do this on purpose instead of doing it by accident? And that next month, I got rid of all my cold call teams. I 100% focused on the podcast interviews with a view to seeing if I could actually get those people to pay me money at the end of those interviews. And at the end of that first month, I was able to make $10,000 and podcast closing was born. And so that actually went on to be one of my very first products. One of my friends said, Jamie, you should teach other people how to do this. So many people aren't making money with their podcast. And that's how my first podcast profit lab product was born. We sold it at 997 and we sold over $500,000 worth of that product, teaching people how to launch a top 100 podcast and how to make sales with that podcast. And so once we had this process down, this was about four and a half years ago, we've just been refining that process ever since. And so one of the things that's really interesting about this process is that today we've actually helped our clients generate over $8 million with us and our clients generating that much money using this formula. And I want to break down how this works because podcast closing is actually quite simple in understanding how this process works. So step one is that we actually invite our dream customer onto a podcast interview. 
And so in step one, when we invite this person over, what we want to do is get them to come through a structured process so we can make sure that we are filtering for our dream customer. Now, the reason that podcast closing works so well, guys, is because of the fact that we are inviting people to a podcast interview. When we had a traditional video sales letter where people would go to a page, watch a video and fill in an application, we would only have about 3% of people who would actually complete the application. So if we sent 1,000 people to that page, only 30 people would complete the form. Whereas when we actually did a podcast application instead, when we sent 1,000 people to the page, we had nearer 250 to 300 people who completed that form. It was significantly higher. And I actually had one of my friends, he runs a business that does about $6 million a year, and he has an email list. At the time, this was about two years ago, um, he had an email list of 5,000 people, and he sent an email out to his list inviting them to come and apply to be on a podcast. 2,000 people opened that email and he actually had over 400 applications that came through inside of that process. It was crazy how many people actually applied to come on the show. And so the foundation of why this process works is that it's very easy to get people to apply and come onto your podcast. So step one is we want to invite your dream customer. Step two is that we then want to give them an absolutely amazing experience. We want to go in and we want to interview the customer. And the goal here is very simple. We want to build trust. We want to build rapport. We want to give them an absolutely amazing podcasting experience but we're actually seeding curiosity for our offer inside of this. And so over the last four years, as we've been really refining this process, we've gone from simply asking people at the end of those podcast interviews if they want to book a sales call to now what we're doing is we're interweaving questions. We've got this process throughout our podcasting funnel where we're actually building curiosity and we're actually getting our guests to ask us about our offer. And this is something we call pull podcast closing. And there's a video down on the page with one of our clients, Brett, who managed to close a shark from Shark Tank. And he was able to close them into a six-figure deal using this pull podcast close process. And you can see that video further down on this page. And so what we're doing in this interview process is just giving and fulfilling on the promise of the interview, but building a lot of trust. And what this does is it builds reciprocity. Before we ever ask them for anything, we're building trust, we're giving them something valuable. And then when we move over into step three, which is where we offer them the next step, all we're doing is we're not giving them a pitch, we're not selling them on our offer, we're simply offering them the next step. We're saying, hey, you know, it sounds like we could maybe help you. I wondered if you were curious and wanted to jump on another call. And this three-step process, which we've been working on in the last three years, has been fantastic. Now, initially, you know, we had people coming into this process who were doing five or 10K a month, and they were able to get to 10, 20, 30, 50K a month, doubling, tripling, 5Xing their sales. We've even had some people who've made millions from this. But I personally had some problems with this process as a business owner. You know, one of my biggest problems as an owner is that I had time issues. So I would go out and I would do, you know, two or three interviews a day. I would end up doing about 10 interviews a week. I used to block out from 12 till three every day in my calendar for interviews. And usually by the end of the week, I would end up with two or three sales that came in from this process. And so we were making good money. But one of the problems was as my business continued to grow, my time started to get pulled in different directions. And I was no longer able to be the person that did all of these interviews. So even though this was great, even though a lot of people were making money, a lot of our clients were getting success, I started to hit a personal threshold in my business where this wasn't the most viable option to grow and scale my business. And so around about 15 months ago, we sat down and we looked at our process and we said, how do we make this scalable? And so we actually ended up creating something that we call a podcast sales team. And so one of the big things that's super important to understand is that the podcast closing process was working incredibly well but I just didn't have capacity to do it as the host of the show anymore. And so we went out and we said, how do we still do this exact same process, but without me as the owner having to be involved? And what we ended up creating was something that we call a podcast sales team. And a podcast sales team is just made up of two very simple factors. We have one, a podcast setter. And so this is somebody that hosts the podcast interviews for you. They typically work for about 30 hours a week and they work completely on commission. A typical podcast setter will make around about 5% commission. 
on the sales that you make. So if you don't make any sales, you don't pay the setter. Amazing. And the podcast setter's goal is to create sales calls inside of the business. So we have them go through our podcast funnel. They have the interviews getting dropped in. And all they do is show up for interviews and book sales calls and give clients an absolutely amazing experience. And then the second part of the podcast sales team is a dedicated sales closer. So earlier when we talked about once you get to 30, 40, 50K a month, you need to actually create leverage sales. This is what we're talking about. We've got somebody setting up the sales calls and somebody closing the sales calls without us having to be involved at all. And so between these two individuals, we actually started to say, how do we scale this solution more like an outbound sales team, like maybe you would scale a cold calling team instead of thinking of this like a traditional marketer. And so when we had this before, we had around about a 30K a month cap because most people could do, you know, two to three hours of interviews a day. And a lot of people, this was great. They went in, they two to five X their sales. They went from 5K to 10K, 20K to 30K. But once we were able to actually implement a podcast sales team, now actually we had limitless growth because we could just bring in as many setters as we want as we scale the business. Imagine instead of having one setter doing podcast interviews, if you had two or three instead, all working 30 hours a week, all working on commission, booking you sales calls for your sales team. And so this is what we ended up working on inside of the business. And the beauty of this is as we continue to scale and grow our company, I don't have to be involved in the interview process. I don't have to be involved in the content creation. We just have this team that works. And so I want to take you behind the scenes of some of the numbers of what these podcast setters look like and how this works. And so a typical podcast setter is going to work 30 hours a week. They're going to be doing about four interviews a day initially. So we typically have them working from, you know, nine until, you know, three in the afternoon. They book some interviews in between that time. And so you're working and they're getting about 20 interviews a week. And what we see with even brand new podcast setters is that with the way we set up this process, we get around about 50% of people that convert into booking a sales call. Now, inside of our personal business, we actually have more of a 60 or a 70% conversion rate. We even have some clients who have as high as a 90 or a 95% podcast closing rate. But 50% is a great number to look at. This is kind of the average of what everybody gets inside of our process. And so if they're doing four interviews a day, they're typically booking about two sales calls a day for the business. And so because this process is converting and getting you booked sales calls, and because it's very easy to get people to come onto a podcast interview, we were able to completely automate the marketing process and get sales calls coming in. And what was really interesting is we actually converted and compared what our traditional video sales letter was like to our podcast sales process. And when we had a video sales letter, we were having about 17 to 21% of our deals converting into offers where people were buying. And when we look at this inside of our um, podcast closing process, we actually now get about a 30 to a 33% close rate. So the conversion is higher than our regular VSL. And we typically put that down to us having a personal connection and relationship with people before we ever make them a sales call. And so if you've got just one podcast setter in your business doing 30 hours a week on commission, 5% commission, typically you'll get, you know, 10 sales calls a week booked. And if you're getting about 30% of them closing, that's three sales a week. If you have a $6,000 product, that's 18K a week in sales or 75K a month from one podcast setter. So depending on how you do this with, you know, just a setter or with a salesperson, if you had a dedicated salesperson and a podcast setter, you know, this is about an 85% gross profit margin. So on that $75,000 a month, you're making about 60 to $63,000 a month in gross profit, 600K a year, it's about 500K a year in profit. Now, what's really exciting about this is these are just the beginning numbers. As a podcast setter gets more advanced, as they get more skills, typically, once you've been working with one for 90 days, instead of doing four interviews a day, they typically will increase and end up doing six interviews a day. And over time, instead of doing a one hour interview, a lot of the time they can get this interview down to 45 minutes or 30 minutes. And so some of the best podcast setters actually can do as many as eight interviews a day. And not only are they able to do more volume, 
but their podcast close rate increases. So again, within my personal podcast closing team, we typically see about a 60 to a 65% average podcast closing ratio. So if you've got instead of a, let's just say it's a 60% podcast closing ratio, but we're now doing 30 to 40 interviews a week. Now what we're looking at is instead of 10 sales calls, we've got as many as 15 to 23 sales calls that are coming in, again, from one podcast setter as their skill levels increase over time. And so when you look at the numbers and you start to break down what that looks like, again, from those 15 to 20 sales calls, if you're getting you know 20 to 30% of those that are closing into these deals, we're talking you know five to six sales that are actually gonna be happening inside of a week. If we look at the exact same numbers, we're now saying, great, we're now looking at 30 to 36K a week in sales, which in terms of a month, if we just underestimate, you're talking 120K a month, 100K profit. And again, this is from one podcast setter, one person that's doing this process for you. And remember, this is just the front end. We are not talking about the podcast content that's being created. We are simply talking about the people coming in and being interviewed and scaling this offer. Now, what's great is that there's actually some amazing byproducts that are getting created on the back end of this. Now, your one setter is going out there and they are essentially an attractive character for your business instead of you. And the way I think of this is kind of like radio shows, right? Radio shows bring in new radio DJs all the time. You know, every three, four, five years, they might have a new person that comes in and that show continues to grow and that show has all of the same listeners, but there's a new person that is hosting that show. That's kind of what we're doing here with the podcast setters. It's our branded show. We're creating a name for ourselves. We're growing a really big audience, but that podcast setter is also growing a name for themselves. They're growing as an individual and they're creating 30 to 40 pieces of interview content every single week. Now, what's good about this is that there's a huge amount of personal growth that comes from somebody in this position. They're going to become a better speaker. They're going to build more connections. They're going to build more relationships. And they're doing this on behalf of you inside of your business and creating all of this content for you for free. And the really great thing about this is that we sat down in our business and we said, oh my gosh, you know, we're going out now and we're doing sometimes as many as a hundred interviews a week. We can't keep up with this content. And, you know, that was a really big worry for us. And so within our process, we actually now have created a zero edit process. And so when we're doing as many as 40 interviews a week or 100 interviews a week, because of the way we've set up the system, it doesn't need any editing. We still have an amazing intro, an amazing outro, and the podcast still sounds amazing, but it only takes one of our VAs about 45 minutes to output over a hundred episodes because of the way that we set the system up. So you have all of this content being created and all of that over time is going to build and compound and grow your brand. So you have a huge volume of these high quality interviews that are coming in. And as these interviews begin to grow over time, and once you've got this system down, you can really start to think about what we call stage two growth. So for example, imagine your show, you've got one or two podcast setters. Let's say you're making 60K a month in profit. What you can do is you can take a small portion of that profit. You can take, let's say $5,000. You can hire an absolutely phenomenal full-time agency who can go and take all of that content, create short form TikTok, YouTube, uh, Reels, all of that content for you. And this creates what we call a feedback loop of exponential compounding growth. Your front end sales system, which is bringing you seven figures in revenue, is actually creating content for you for free. And you can take a portion of that profit and hand it off to somebody else. And this creates exponential compounding growth. The more you do this, the faster the growth becomes until you have this beautiful runaway train of audience growth that comes from your sales system. And so what we do with these podcasts, which is great, is because we aren't selling anything, the podcasts, they don't have any call to action, so it doesn't limit any of the growth of the show. A lot of people say, once you start trying to monetize content, it limits the reach. And so 
Alex Amosi talks all the time. I'm not here to sell you anything. Gary Vee says, if you can just delay the ask forever, you'll create so much goodwill with your audience, you'll just keep growing. And so we're able to tap into this virality because we don't need to sell anything on these podcast content. We can just give amazing content, amazing value, and we're monetizing on the back end just from people coming and being interviewed on the show. And so what this allows us to do over time is as a stage two growth plan is to shift your focus as the business owner. So once you have this seven-figure sales system built out where you're completely uninvolved with this process, what you can do is come in and have one core show at the top of the mountain where you're doing one show a week or a couple shows a week talking about you, the business, and how you help people. And then down below, you have all of these sub podcasts run by the podcast setters, and they're doing all of this output, creating all of this content, creating all of this audience growth. And the call to action for all of these podcasts is if you enjoy this interview show, go listen to the core podcast over here. And it allows us to create perpetual growth over time, feeding back to your core show. And so we actually borrowed this idea from HubSpot. They do this all the time. They go out and they get these different shows, these sub podcasts, and it all goes back to HubSpot. And so we want you to create your own engine and get you going through this exact same process. And so the way this works for most people when we go through this process is stage one, we call this the six figure podcast. We actually go through three distinct phases. The first phase is what we call the clarity phase. We need to make sure that we are very, very clear on who your rich market is, the people that can afford to pay you the most money. We want to make sure that your offer is premium enough, that you are selling at a high enough price or that you have a premium offering so that you can make significantly more profit inside of your business. And once we're clear on who the market is that you want to attract inside of your business, phase two is what we call the building phase. And this is where we build the automatic sales system, the one that automatically filters for your dream customers gets customers coming in for the podcast interviews, automatically begins to pre-sell them and is ultimately very transparent telling people, hey, we'd love for you to come on the show and we may offer you a call at the end of it. I'll tell you a second a bit more about that transparency. And phase three is the execution phase. Once we have that automatic sales system built out in the execution phase, we can go in and focus on you as the business owner just completing interviews and just completing sales calls. And in stage one, our goal with this is essentially to stress test this new podcast sales system. One of the really important things to recognize is that every business is unique. And so your unique offer, your unique opportunity that you're helping people with is going to be different for every single business. And so if you try and hire out this process too early before you figure out all the kinks in the system, then they're not going to be successful as a podcast setter. So goal one is to install this system and to stress test it and to get the system good enough for scale. And so out of the gate over 16 weeks, we typically will come and get over a hundred qualified appointments We'll get you as the business owner coming through this process. We get the system good enough to scale. We make back your ROA on this initial process. And once we get to that level, we are then ready to execute stage two, which is the podcast sales team. And inside of stage two, what we want to do is really focus on creating leverage. I was at a mastermind with uh, Russell Brunson and I was actually sat, and this was around about three years ago, next to an eight figure business owner. And we were on the third day comparing each other's businesses. And I had a six figure business at the time and he had an eight figure business. And we were looking at the numbers and I said, well, how do I grow a business like yours? And so we wrote down all these numbers and he said, Jamie, like when we look at our close rates, you have a better close rate than me. You have a 32% close rate and we have a 21% close rate. Now, if you look at your profit, your profit's better. You've got 70% profit, we've got 52%. You know, you're actually paying a lot less to get a deal. You know, it's costing you $1,200 to get a closed customer. It's costing us $2,000 to get a closed customer. But here's the difference between mine and your business. You are only booking seven sales calls a week. We're booking 150. The only difference between my business and yours is leverage. And you just need to understand that in order to grow a successful business, you just need to do more volume. And you can't do more volume by yourself. This was a huge wake up call for me to understand that what was keeping me stuck as a business owner wasn't that my offer wasn't good enough. It wasn't that my business wasn't good enough. It's just that I wasn't creating more leverage so that we could 
increase the amount of book calls that we were doing. And that's exactly what we're able now to do with a podcast sales team. And so the secret to actually going out and building a multiple six and seven figure business and scaling up to being really successful is leverage where you are not the person that is growing the business and booking more sales calls, but also that you're focused on making sure your numbers are good enough to scale, not absolutely perfect. I see way too many business owners wait too long to install the leverage. And so our goal inside of this process is really just to stress test the system and get it good enough so we can then install a podcast setter and a closer so you can begin creating leverage and scaling to that next level. Now, Stage two of that podcast sales team is really simple. Once you've got a good enough number to scale, we just really do two things. We hire an A player sales team and create leverage, a setter and a closer. We plug you into our 20K Facebook group. So we have a group full of people looking for podcast interviews and we handle the traffic for you. And you focus on helping that sales team to scale to seven figures inside of your business. And your new focus becomes the owner of the business instead of the person that is running the business. And so that's ultimately where we want to get you guys to inside of this process. Now, again, this three-step process that we're really trying to take you through in order to build this seven-figure podcast sales team is one, we want you to install the sales system. Two, we want to get you that ROI on your initial investment. And we want to stress test the system so that it's good enough to then install somebody else else into those roles as the podcast setter and the salesperson. And then we can focus on developing that sales team to get you to the seven figure level. Now, a lot of people say, Jamie, this sounds great. You know, how do we know this is going to work? Well, we guarantee that this process is going to work for you. The first guarantee we have is that we will guarantee that you're going to get at least a hundred showed up qualified appointments. uh, Or if we don't get this process inside of the four months, we're actually going to go and run this traffic done for you. So if you're not able to get these showed up appointments, we'll go and do it for you until you get at least 100 showed up appointments. And most of our clients, if you have 100 showed up appointments, you know, you might be able to get 50 of those people to go into a deeper sales call. But even if you get just 30 or 40 of them, most people will sell three, four, five, six customers you should be able to generate anywhere from 20, 30, 40, 50, or even 100,000 just from those 100 showed up appointments, depending on your skill level. The second guarantee we have is really just our brand promise. We want to give you a guarantee of predictable and increasing sales over time. So our brand promise is a full return on investment. So you have 100% confidence that this podcast closing system is actually going to work for you. And how that works is if you don't make back your full investment or more in the first six months, you get your money back. It's really as simple as that. And we base this promise on over four years of client data points, which show that companies who install and use this podcast closing system, typically 2.1x their sales in the first four months on average. So I wanted to give you a little bit more behind the scenes. You know, I want you to understand the reason that the system is so good is that we drink our own Kool-Aid. This is the only thing we do inside of our own personal business to grow and book sales calls. We do podcast interviews and we get those people feeling amazing and we make them an offer to get onto a sales call on the back end. It's really simple. We get leads coming in. We do interviews. And from those 30 or 40 interviews a week, we're able to go and turn them into book sales calls for our business. And so this offer primarily works well, guys, because it is easy to get people to book in for a podcast interview. And we've built this system over time to be as automatic as possible to help you to book those sales calls. Now, a lot of people will say to me, Jamie, like the number one objection I have with this is it sounds great, but isn't this dishonest? Aren't we doing a bit of a bait and switch here? We're having someone come in for a podcast interview. And then at the end, we're saying, "Ah, actually, just kidding. It's a sales call. And so one of the things that's really important to understand here, guys, is that inside of this process, the number three most important things that we have to focus on is transparency, clear expectations and permission. So before somebody comes onto the podcast interview inside of the funnel, we're going to tell them, hey, you know, we are going to offer you a sales call at the end of this. And what we're doing is by having those clear expectations, by being transparent up front, it actually allows people to opt out if they don't feel good about it. And it just gives people the right expectations coming in. Just like the Bradley example, you know, if you just know that when you're going to go on Bradley's podcast, he's going to pitch you like crazy. 
You're going to be okay with that. And a lot of time you're going to be open to him helping you inside of your business. And so we call this kind of a triple win inside of the business. One, it's a win for the person who's coming on the show because they get exposure, they get authority, credibility, they build connections by coming on the show. It's a win for the audience because they get amazing content. And it's a win for us because we get to connect with an individual who's probably our dream customer. We're able to build a relationship with them, build that connection. And then if they are curious about how you can help them, we can offer in a very soft and powerful way to move them to a next step and actually get onto a sales call. And this works because of reciprocity. We're giving them something valuable before we ask for them for something in return. So guys, I hope that gives you a little bit more context about how this process works. I'm really excited for you to get on the call with one of our team members and talk more about if this is the right fit for you inside of your business. If you want to learn more, if you scroll down on the page, we have some examples of, for example, Brett, who is able to close Kevin Harrington. We do a live walkthrough of him closing um, that that deal and we kind of break it down director's commentary style as well as some deeper dives into this process so scroll down on the page keep an eye out for those emails and we're really excited to talk to you about whether this podcast sales team system is going to be a great fit for your business